There was a recent thread on CNC Zone where uh, the question was asked if it's possible to take an STL model, a uh, mesh model, and using Bobcad to cut it up into slices so that the model can be made that's bigger than the uh, work area of, of a particular machine and then reassembled. And uh, at the time, I couldn't find any way to do it. The, although Bobcad does have, especially Bob Art, does have uh, some ability to work with meshes, it's not really a mesh editor. Uh, not long after that, though, I saw a video that Al DePaulo put up in uh, which he was showing the use of uh, solid models as stock and, uh, and saving those out as, as a way to do some particularly intensive machining. And... Uh, Following up on that, I tried it out and found that the other is in fact a way to do the, the uh, mesh editing needed for layering in, uh, in Bobcad, totally within Bobcad. So uh, what I have here is an example, it's, it's kind of a stylized submarine hull, and looking at it from a front view, I have stock here that is one inch thick, and this model is, uh, the axis is right now one inch below the XY plane, I've got a little bit rising up here. But basically, by doing a tool path for this top part and a tool path going down to the axis here in another one inch thick uh, section, uh, because this is a symmetrical model, you could do two of each of those and then stack them together to make the full model. So I'm going to show you the, uh, the workflow for doing that. Uh, for starters, let me get back to an isometric view. There we go. Uh, also, because my system is not really all that powerful, running video capture software alongside of Bobcad, when Bobcad is running big meshes, is it's very slow, and uh, apologize for that. But uh, what I have here is uh, the top part of the model is set up, as you can see. I've got some boundary geometry in here that uh, is used. Let me unblank this toolpath. Uh, it's used to constrain a slice planer toolpath back out a little bit and uh, as you can see this is basically the uh, tool path that will be needed to cut this top section out of one inch stock uh, I'm not going to show the, the roughing because it's really not uh, not related to what we're doing here so what you would want to do is set this up for your top slice go ahead and make your tool paths save out the tool path and, uh, and have your, your G code sitting there ready to go and at that point you're pretty much done with this setup like that again. So what you want to do is uh, at this point make your stock the uh, model itself. So going to the uh, milling stock, go to the stock wizard and go to an STL file as your stock. Then you can browse for the STL file which in this case is, let me find it here, is subhull.stl. So I'm going to make that my stock. And now you see my previous stock disappears and when I blank the uh, the layer that that STL model is on there's my stock. And uh, I'm blanking it, I have my model back. But what you want to do at this point is to machine off, I'll go to the front view here, everything above the data mine here, everything above the XY plane. And because I already have the boundary geometry in there for the, uh, the slice planer, I'm just going to use that to run a, a 2D pocketing feature. So I'll set that up, mill to axis, select my geometry, and again I apologize for this going so slow, uh, without the video capture software running it's really not a problem to do all this, but with that on top of Bobcad right now it's got my system pretty much on its knees. There's my stock selected. Now that's incorrect. 
let me cancel out of that. The geometry I want to select is actually this uh, boundary. So I'm going to disable the STL model just so I can select it more easily. So there I have that boundary selected and uh, confirm it, clicking OK or hitting the space bar. And I want my top of feature to be, I can just make it one. Total depth is one. Get my rapid and feed plane set up so that they go above the stock, which is top of stock basically is at uh, one inch. And I really only want a pocketing feature here, so I'm going to get rid of these profiles and just put in pocket. Arc moves are fine. And this, by the way, is a totally fictitious toolpath. I'm not going to be cutting a thing with it. This is just for purposes of getting this into the simulation. Um, my tool crib, I'll pick a half inch flat end mill. I'm not concerned with feeds or speeds. Uh, not concerned with basically anything as long any of these will work fine as long as they uh, cut the stock down to the uh, level of, of the XY plane here. I do want to make sure that it cuts all of it so no allowances. I'm going to go in a single step, one inch depth. All that's fine. And we'll tell it to compute the toolpath. I'm going to blank my stock so that you can see this a little better. Now I've got a pocketing tool path that's going to flatten off the top part of this curve. Go ahead and unblank that so that you can see a little better. And go to a front view. So this line, the XY plane, is everything above that is going to get milled off of the uh, stock. Now from here, uh, I've gone ahead and and uh, unposted the other features so that this is the only part that the simulation is going to be concerned with is this pocketing. And now we'll bring up the simulation. And I think due to my video card, which is a fairly low-end gaming card, uh, when I run this, it's not actually going to show it removed. It may actually be the settings uh, in here. I'm not sure. But in any case, I'm, I'm just going to take it as red that it's going to uh, cut it off. So I'll run this. And as you can see, it's still showing it there, but you can see that it's cut it off, and we know where the toolpath is. And at this point, we can go to the Cut Sim tab. And up here you get save stock, save actual stock to SDL file. We click on this. We'll name it planed hull.sdl and save it. Uh, I've already done this in practice, so it's it, it already exists, but uh, that's really not an issue. So we've saved this model with the top cut off in a, uh, a new stereolithography file. I'll go ahead and turn this off. And I should probably mention the reason for uh, doing this. When uh, well, my stock is missing now because I uh, changed the stock wizard. But when you cut the top part out, uh, it seemed at first that the thing to do was simply raise the model one inch and then set a uh, an upper well top of part at uh, at uh, one inch and bottom of part at zero and I, it should have you know just cut that. In fact, uh, Bobcat doesn't because you have to pick the model as your geometry. It uh, insisted on cutting up and over this curve, which defeats the purpose. Now this is only one inch, but in the case of someone who's cutting a bigger model, you know you you want the biggest stock you can fit in there. And if it's trying to raise much above that, it may exceed the limits of the machine. So uh, needed a way to flatten this off so that it would not have you know any stock above the uh, one inch plane. And go to the front to show you again. 
So one inch is about here. Well, if you raise the model one inch, it would be you know up roughly up in here, and that's beyond the size we wanted. So all right, we've got a new STL model saved. We've got our G code saved. We can go ahead and uh, drop this file, close it out, and bother to change anything, and we'll import the uh, the STL. So I've got this uh, file already set up, and I'll open it. And here we are. All right, at this point, we have a uh, version of the STL model that's had the top planed off. I'll go ahead and kick over to a an isometric view so you can see that better. As you can see, there's the top gone. Now I've already drawn a little bit of geometry, but first things first, go back to a front view. You can see that it's now at the level of what I've been using as, as the cutting table. So I need to raise this up one inch. Uh, just a simple translation. And of course it takes forever. Let's just try it again. Delta one inch. There we go. May have been my mouse actually. So we translate this up one inch. There we go. Such that the flat is now even with the uh, top of the one inch thick stock. Go into a top view. You can see that I've got some boundary geometry already in here and I've in fact already done the tool path. And I'm going to blank the model so that we can see this better. See how much faster this system responds when you don't have an STL model bogging it down along with the video? Anyway, here we have now a flat top model, which we were not able to get before. And adding this, uh, or adding the uh, result of the first tool path, say this was being cut out of foam, you would have a foam round with a flat bottom this size, glue it onto the piece that you've cut out here, do it twice again and glue that to the bottom side and you've got your STL model. Now this is a very simple uh, example but even in a fairly complex model if you wanted to uh, layer it then just you know, do the step of defining the model as your stock, putting it into the sim, planing it down to the level that you want the, uh, the uh, break to be at and then save that as an STL bring it back in and, and run your toolpath and uh, Bob's your uncle. So there we have it. There is a way in Bobcad to do manipulation of STLs that I didn't know about until fairly recently, thanks to Al DePaulo. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.